Welcome back to Educator.com. This is the Life Science course, and today's lesson is on amphibians. Our objectives for today will be to uh, discuss what are the common characteristics that all amphibians share, how have amphibians adapted to living in water and on land, and compare and contrast frogs and toads. Let's first talk about common characteristics of amphibians. Amphibians are vertebrates or animals that live both in water and on land at some point in their lives. The word amphibian actually means double life because of that. Um, they breathe with lungs and they uh, also are able to take in oxygen through their very moist, slimy skin. Uh, they depend on water for reproduction. That's actually where they lay their eggs. Because the eggs actually begin uh, in a very fish-like state where they have gills and fins and later develop into lungs, and we'll discuss that later. All amphibians are what we call ectotherms. Ectotherms means that they are cold-blooded vertebrates and they cannot maintain their own body temperature. So what that means is that their body temperature is based upon their environment. Uh, they also are very inactive or they have certain times when they have no activity uh, and that occurs during extreme weather conditions. For example, amphibians are able to hibernate or go to sleep um, and not look for food and um, are very very, very inactive during very cold weather. But at the same time, on the uh, other end of the spectrum, they also uh, are able to estivate, which just means they're having a very inactive period during very hot and dry months. And that's to help them to survive and prevent water loss. So that they don't uh, dehydrate. Um, some common amphibians that I'm sure you've heard of are frogs, toads, salamanders, and newts. Newts are actually a type of salamander, and in some areas of the world, those two terms can be used interchangeably. And in other areas of the world, a uh, salamander and a newt are differed based upon uh, how long that animal lives in the water. For example, certain newts are classified as newts because they just have a longer aquatic life. So for today's lesson, we'll just discuss those as one and the same. Let's first talk about metamorphosis and what that means for amphibians. Amphibians go through a change in uh, their body structure uh, from the time that they're larvae or little baby amphibian all the way to the time that they're adults. Now we're used to um, certain animals like humans and dogs and cats, they start out very young but just very miniature versions of what they look like as adults. However, for amphibians, their young stage or their young water stage um, is, looks very different from their adult land stage. Number one, when they're young, they live in water. Um, they, the eggs of amphibians, the fertilized eggs, actually um, hatch in water and they start out as what we call tadpoles or these tiny little larvae that are able to swim. Here's a, a tadpole. And they have very similar structures just similar to a fish. For example, they live in water, they have fins, gills, and just like fish, they have a two-chambered heart. Now, the adult stage looks very different. For the adult amphibian, it lives primarily on land. Uh, the tadpole that once lived in the water starts to develop structures that look more like an adult amphibian. For example, those structures would be four legs, hind legs, 
lungs, and a three-chambered heart. So those fins, gills, and two-chambered heart develop even further into more complex structures. Here's a diagram to show that uh, the development of an amphibian starts out as eggs. Then you have the tadpole stage. And then you go into the adult stage. And the adult stage is when they develop their legs, lungs, and three-chambered heart. Here is a picture of bullfrog tadpoles. And they're rather large tadpoles, but again, they cannot survive out of the water. However, once they become adults, they are frogs. This bullfrog here lives on land. 